Good morning, Vero. Good morning, teacher. How are you? How are you today, Vero? So fine. Excellent. Very nice. Is it raining a lot by your house? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. No, from, but it's raining. Yeah. Yeah. It's been constant, right? Yes. Yeah, I didn't stop all night here by my house, so. <laughs> all right, very good. Okay, so Sophia's also here, very good. Hi, Sophia, maybe she can hear me yet. Hi, Sophia. Hi, good morning. Good morning, how are you today? I'm fine. Fine? All right, very good. It's Wednesday. <laughs> it's half the week. Yes. Which is good. <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, guys. So he, yesterday, um, we were talking with your other classmates. We are on section three. All right. And we're talking about relative clauses. All right. Do you know what relative clauses are, Sophia and Vero? If I say to you relative clauses, what... What is it? Do you understand them? Mm. Uh, Morning exam. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know. I don't All right. Have... That's okay. All right. Very good. So yesterday with Exa and the other classmates, good morning, Exa, we were talking about relative clauses and what they do is that they join two sentences together. All right. That's like the main purpose of relative clauses. We can have relative, I mean, actually, when we use relative clauses, we use relative pronouns. And relative pronouns are who, which, that, and others, all right? Like when, where, whom, also, right? But right now, we're only using three. We're using um, who for people, only for people, which is only for things or animals. And that is for both for people and for things, okay? So right now, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna share with you the presentation I had yesterday. I sent it to the group anyway, but I'll show it to you right now. Let me just get it here. Good morning, Carla. Morning, Carla. Morning, teacher. How are you? <clears throat> um, I'm not okay. Oh, I, no. have a, I have an... Um, a strong headache, so. Oh, like a migraine, I, Carlita? Yes. Oh, no. I, I had this, so it's not good, but. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for being in class. I know it's hard. I suffer from migraines, and that's very difficult. I understand. <laughs> okay, All right, thank you. All right, so here, morning, Ileana. Okay, so here, I'm going to show you this one better, guys. Uh, for Sophia and Vero that were not in class yesterday, but for the rest of you, it's like a review. Here we have relative clauses, okay? And it says join two sentences by using who or which, all right? But we can also use that, all right? So when we say, for example, um, I'm gonna show you this one here. And this is like for the rest of you guys too. When you have relative clauses, you have Mary is a girl who lives next door. So you probably had, Mary is a girl is one sentence. Another sentence probably said, she lives next door. And what we do with relative clauses is that we join them, all right? So as a result, we have, Mary is a girl who lives next door, all right? So we're, we're using who here to join these two sentences together. Do you understand what I'm talking about, girls? I'm going to show you this one here. That was the one that we used yesterday just for you to see. This is the rest of it. Here it says, if you can actually see this one, uh, it says Peter is a student, is the student, all right? We have one sentence going on there. And then we say he comes from Glasgow, all right? So what we do is that we want to join those two sentences together to make one whole sentence and we use it, or we do it by using relative pronouns, which is who, which, and that, and we join them together with, the, in this case, the relative pronoun who, because we're talking about a person, 
Peter is a student who come, comes from Glasgow. If you notice this, he disappears. All right, that one goes away. Why? Because it's being replaced by this one. All right, and then the rest of your sentence. Or you can say the books that are on the table, another sentence, they are mine. If you join those two sentences together, you're going to use a relative pronoun, which, because it's talking about things, so you say the books which are on the table are mine. And I was telling your classmates yesterday that that sounds better. All right, instead of saying, they are the, the, uh, the books are on the table, uh-huh, they are mine, okay? So join those two together so that your English sounds more fluent and you're giving like more information about it or essential information about what's happening, okay? So that is pretty much what relative clauses do, all right? And that's what we were talking about yesterday. Were we able to finish checking these guys yesterday, Ileana? Uh, Nexa, did we finish checking this or we didn't check anything yesterday, right? No, no, check. no, we didn't. Yeah, because yeah, we ran out of time actually. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah, you finished, but we didn't check it. We, did, we didn't check them, right? Okay, very good. Okay, let's see. So, uh, Ileana, number one, she worked for a man. The man used to be an athlete. So, what do you have in one whole sentence? Uh, she worked for a man. She worked for a man who used to be an athlete. Who used to be an athlete, right? Very good. So now we know essential information about this man. Very good. Exa, can you do number two, please? Good morning, Blanca. Good morning. They call a lawyer who lived nearby. Nearby. Mm -hmm. Not nearby. Yes. Okay. So join those two. Exa, please. They call a lawyer who lived nearby. Excellent, they called a lawyer who lived nearby, right? Nearby is like close to your house, for example. All right, very good. Let's see, Sophia, do you wanna try number three? I sent an email to my brother. My brother lives in Australia. Okay, I sent an email to my brother who lives in Australia. Excellent, very good, Sophia, well done. All right, it's not very complicated who lives in Australia, very nice. All right, let's see. Um, Carlita, do you mind trying number four? Do you feel yes. okay? Yeah, okay. Okay. The customer like to write it. The writers, the writers was very friendly. The customers liked to, the writers, the writers who, live, who was very friendly. All right, so the customer liked the waitress who was very friendly. That's what you have? Yeah. All right, guys, do you have any, um, Exa or Ileana, do you have it differently or that's how you have it also? Teacher can be that. Yeah, also, right, yeah. Yes. Remember, mm -hmm. uh, we have the both. The right. customers like to write us that was very friendly. Right. Or who was very friendly. Very good, thank you. All right, number five, Exa, do you mind doing number five again? We brought a computer which belonged to my father. Yes, oh my goodness, we brought the computer which belonged to my father, or that belonged to my father. Either or, it's okay. Very good. Um, Veronica, do you mind, do you wanna try number six, Veronica? Okay, I drop a glass. Um, which was new. Perfect, very good. I dropped a glass which was new. Do you understand the verb drop? Yes, you're like, oops, you dropped it, right? You dropped it, very good. Next one, um, who wants to do this one? Blanca, do you wanna try doing number seven? She loves books. Huh? The book have happy ending. Right, so join um, those two sentences together. Uh -huh. The books have happy ending. Right, so you say she loves books. Who, which or that? Blanca. Would you say which? Who or that to join those two sentences together? Uh, that. Okay, sure. 
Okay, remember that you can use that for either who or which, all right, for either people or things, so that's okay. So you would say she loves books that have happy endings or she loves books which have happy endings, all right? And either way, it's fine. Very good. Good morning, Araceli. Thank you, Blanca. Araceli, can you hear us? Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Morning. Can you, morning. Can you try to do number eight for us, please? <clears throat> Yes. Um, they live in a city. Uh -huh. um, which is in which in the north of England. That's right. Yes, they live in a city which is in the north of England, or they live in a city that is in the north of England. What you cannot do is say who, right? Because England is not a person. Excellent, Araceli. Very good. Well done. All right. Now we have number nine and we have number 10. And I told you they, 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 from number nine on, we had a special cases, all right? So um, can someone try to do number nine for me? The man is in the garden who is wearing a blue jumper. Okay, very good. Okay, any other way? Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. me. The man who is wearing a blue jumper is in the garden. Very good. Okay, so that one, you can make a switch, let's say, and I'm gonna tell you why. Just give me a second. Number 10, the girl works in a bank, the girl is from India. Can you try to do that one? The girl who is from India works in a bank. Okay, say it again, Ilian, I'm sorry. The girl, who is from India, okay. works in a bank. Right, very good. Okay, Exa, do you have it differently? Yes, yeah, the normal way. The normal way, right? The girl works in a bank who is from India. Yes. All right, very good. Okay, so what's happening in number nine and number 10? And I'm gonna stop sharing this for you for a second. When we talk about relative clauses, we have two types. We have defining relative clauses and we have non-defining relative clauses. What's the difference? When you talk about relative clauses and you talk about defining relative clauses, they are the ones that we've been doing, all right? The normal ones, all right? That you only had the who. Uh, Brad Pitt is the actor who won many Oscars, all right? And that's a defining relative clause. You don't need a comma, yet you're using a relative pronoun. But for number nine and number 10, there's more information going on here. There is like extra information. So that's when non-defining relative clauses come in. We will see this topic, a specific this topic later, all right? Like later, I don't know if it's in this course or in the advanced levels, all right? But it's like an intro for that because you have two types of relative clauses. So the ones for number nine and number 10, they are non-defining relative clauses. So what do you do? You put them between commas. All right, remember that yesterday we said that these ones are not used in commas, right? You only have the who. But now you have the non-defining relative clauses that you need to have commas in between those. And I just wanna show you this one. As I said, I'm not gonna go into detail right now with those ones, but um, I'm gonna show it to you now so you guys like are prepared for the future here. So here we have, just give me a second. Uh, here we have a non-defining clause, all right? Mary, oh, well, we have this sentence here. Mary, who lives next door, is a doctor, all right? You cannot really have it just like that, all right? You need to have commas in between. So you have Mary, comma, who lives next door, is a doctor. Why are they placed, why is this placed between commas? Because you can omit it and the meaning won't change. The, ma the main information is given, all right? If you say Mary is a doctor, that's what you wanna say. Mary is a doctor, but I give you more information about Mary. I give you additional information about Mary. Where does Mary live? She lives next door, all right? So I can say Mary, who lives next door, is a doctor. They are in between commas. If I omit who lives next door, I have a perfect sentence. Mary is a doctor. That's it. That's what I wanted to tell you. I wanted to tell you that Mary is a doctor. If I add who lives next door is extra information. So that is what non-defining relative clauses do. 
These ones, the finding ones, the one that we've been talking about yesterday, they give you essential information, the information that is needed, all right? Whereas non-defining relative clauses, they give you extra information, information that is extra that can or can't not be added, all right? So that's the difference between those two, all right? So if we go back to the example of number, I'm sorry, I'm switching here. Uh, if we go to the example of number nine, the man is in the garden, the man is wearing a blue jumper, all right? So, Ili had it, the man who is in the... Can you repeat your sentence again, Ili? The man who is wearing a blue jumper uh -huh. is in the garden. Right, so you can do this, exactly what she just said, all right? So, I can have it here. Uh, the man, oops, the man comma, all right, who is uh, wearing a blue jumper, right? A blue uh, jumper is in the garden, all right? So that would be the result of number nine and number 10, because in this case, they are relative clauses, but they belong to the category of non-defining. If I omit who is wearing a blue jumper, I have the man is in the garden, I have a perfect sentence, all right? And what is between commas is extra information, all right? Do you understand the difference between those two? One gives you essential information and the other one just gives you like extra information that could be omitted. What happens in now, I'm just gonna make this larger here. What happens in number 10? The girl works in a bank. The girl is from India. All right, what could be the extra information for that one? What could be the extra information? That she works in a bank. Ah, all right, are you sure? Or is that the main sentence? Is from India. Is from India. All right. So here, this is another something. This is something else that we need to realize and pay attention. I'm just gonna write it. Oops, that blue thing cannot be seen. That's okay. Uh, here, I'm just gonna type it. The girl. Oops, I cannot type today. The girl. You can say who is from India works in a bank. All right, so you said the girl who is from India works in a bank. What do you wanna say? That the girl is from India or the girl works in a bank? So you have to ask yourself, what do you wanna convey? What's the most important thing about the girl? That she works in a bank or that she, that she is from India? All right, so it depending, depends on your extra information that you wanna give. In this case, we say the girl who is from India works in a bank. If you omit or if you take out who is from India, you have the girl works in a bank, all right? So you have that extra information of that. Usually what happens here at, the, at first is the important part of your sentence, or that's the main sentence, the main part of your sentence or the main idea of it, all right? Do you guys understand that? So, so? As I said, this topic is gonna to be like very detailed in the future because non-defining, we see one whole class of only non-defining relative clauses. I'm bringing it up right now because we had sentence number nine and number 10 like this. They were like not the same as the other ones. From one to eight, we, you just need to use the who, oops, the who, the which or the that joining the two sentences and you had a perfect sentence, all right? Right now, don't worry so much about number nine and number 10. Teacher. Yes. Um, I don't know, I understand that the one from to eight, yes. uh, the, we have um, sentences with relation. Right. And the, and the nine and ten uh -huh. uh, is when we have we have sentences that is not a relation. It is. They are related, actually, Carlita, but they give you more info. 
Yes, but it's, it's different because yeah. in the number 10, the girl works in a bank. The word is from India, but not is, is, is like say the girl works in a bank, uh, the girl is cashier. Right, okay. For example, see, but there yeah. is a, a relation. Okay, sure, yes. Okay, I see what your point is. Yes, you can see it like that, Carlita. Yeah, very good. Okay, so like, do you, I don't know if uh, you guys are understanding what, I'm sorry about the noise. Uh, I don't know if you guys are understanding what Carlita is saying. All right, for like the, the other ones, from one to eight, you have a relationship going on. I dropped the glass. What ha I mean, which glass? The, the glass was new. If there is a, like a very uh, obvious relationship between those two, whereas in these two, there's not like the relationship is not so obvious. All right, because you're being given more information here. All right, so you can see it that way, if that would help you, Carla, very good. It's a nice way to see it, all right? And then the other ones, they do have a relationship, okay? But as I said, don't worry about number nine and number 10. I just wanted to show you this because they were part of our exercise. And I cannot say to you, yeah, leave it like that, all right? It's fine, no, it's not fine, all right? You need to know the why is not fine, the why they are a little bit different, okay? So I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna keep on giving you more examples related to number nine and number ten because we will do those later on on other courses or you will do them later on on other courses. Okay. All right. Let me see. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing these here. You know what I'm gonna do? Hi Vania. Hi Gabriela. I didn't say good morning to you girls. I'm sorry. Morning. Morning. Just give me a second here. Good morning. Morning. All right, remember, there's something else that you need to remember right now on the platform. We only, we're only talking about relative pronouns of who, which, and that, but there are more. You have a relative pronoun when, where, whom. All right, so you have more relative pronouns going on to make relative clauses, but right now we're not gonna go into detail with these other ones, all right? I have this for you, just let me go get it. Let me see where it is. Uh, it's here, all right, this is what I want you guys to do right now. They're talking about, I want you to see that they're actually talking about relative pronouns here, that we can see them and we can find them anywhere, all right, it's just a matter of paying attention. So what I want you to do is I want you to read this. Take a picture of this, please. Can you guys take a picture of this reading? Yes. All right. And now take a picture of this. All right. Okay. So what are you going to do? You're going to go to your groups and I want you to read the story or the paragraph together. Check on pronunciation, check on vocabulary, and then answer the four or five questions that are there. All right. And we do that, I'm gonna be checking on your groups. I want you to uh, practice your reading. So when I come in, I wanna hear you uh, reading together. So you're like practicing your pronunciation, all right? And if you have any questions about pronunciation or meaning, then you can ask me or you can ask your classmates. All right, there's one group with three people in it. Let's see. We may start now.
Hi. Teacher, sorry, yes. we, we don't have the second pick. Ah, okay, here. No Can you? Yes, yes, it's right here. Okay. Oh. Okay, teacher. Yeah. Thanks. You're so we have to read. We have to read the first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and then answer select the to the. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yep. You're welcome. Okay, Bania. I read the first paragraph and you're the second and. I continue there. Okay. okay, relative pronouns, a very long life. Uh, read the text and answer the questions. Timothy, the tortoise was about 160 years old when he died. Born in the 1900s. Yes, that mm, no, because he was in what in 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 the yeah. second of say in 1892 he went to live at Pod Podgerham. Pod mm -hmm. Hi, teacher. So, um, hi, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Teacher, can you share the second? Yeah, uh, the questions. Yes. Okay. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you finish reading? Yes. Reading, All right. Yes. Okay. Do you want me to keep on sharing the sentence, the questions, or you're okay? It's okay. Hey, it's okay. All right. Okay. okay. Eli, do you want me to share them again, Eli? No, no, no. No, you're fine. Okay. No, thank you. Yeah. Well, number number one is was.
Mm, I think maybe it... <coughs> Hi, Blanca. Hi, Araceli. Hi. Hi. Are you working okay? Are you doing okay? Yeah. All right. Very yes. good. <laughs> Very good. First, first we go and read it, right? Okay. And then uh, we 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 will to respond the question. Okay. And then <laughs> you're finished. I don't remember. That's it. Yeah, you finished everything, the reading and the questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, is my, uh, how do you say, Duda? That was my, my question. That was my doubt. Ah. All right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, very good. It was my doubt. Excellent, very good. So Blanquita, did you did everything okay with the ultrasound? Um, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Did you find did you girls find any words or any vocabulary that you don't know? Yes, but okay. uh, we, well, I, I think uh, um, there, there are names. Yeah, there are names, yes. <clears throat> um, but uh, we don't, we don't finish, we, I don't. I don't know if we will we'll fight more again. Yeah, you have more time, so you can like finish what you were doing. Okay. <coughs> um, but maybe. Uh, no, powder hand is nombre. Yeah, powder ham is a name, yeah. Kim. Mm -hmm. Kin is like sharp. E M. Yeah, it means like sharp, like uh very like um not smart, but very um he had a very the tortoise had a sharp instinct, like agudo. Okay. <clears throat> and shelter. A uh, shelter? Yes. Yeah, shell an air raid shelter is a bomb shelter, like a place that you can hide. A place that? A place that you can hide, like a refugio. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yep. I... Um, maybe that. I don't okay. know, Blanca. All right. Blanca, is there anything else, Blanca? Mm, no, no. All right. Okay. <laughs> And did you answer all the questions? No. Okay, so you can answer the questions right now, and then we still have some a couple of more minutes, so you can answer the questions. Do you have the pictures of the questions? Yes. Okay, all right, very good. So you may work with that right now, okay? Okay. okay. Thank you. <clears throat>
All right, hi guys. All right, were you able to finish reading? Yes, right, you finished yes. reading? Yeah. yeah. All right, very good. Okay, I'm gonna share the reading with you here. Oops, this, this one actually. All right, so I wanna check some pronunciation. Was it difficult? Was the reading a little difficult or no? It's okay. A little difficult. Yes. It was a little difficult. All right, okay, very good. Relative pronouns here. A very long life, all right? Let's see. Um, Araceli, can you read the first paragraph, please? <clears throat> okay. A very long life. Read the next and answer the question. <clears throat> Timothy, the tortoise, the tortoise uh -huh. was about 160 years old when he died at his home near Exeter in November 25? 2005 or 2005. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, Timothy, whose <clears throat> Early life was spent at sea, was thought to be the oldest resident in Britannia at the time. Very good, thank you. All right, Carlita, can you continue reading up to where it says 40 years, Carla, uh, all the way to here? Huh? Uh, he was found? Yes, he was found by British naval officer, Captain John Corn. Courtney, 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 uh huh, uh -huh. Uh, Everard on a Portuguese ship in 1854. Mm -hmm. Continue. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Everard, who was a relative of the Earl of Devon, adopted adopted him, and he became to the mascot on a succession of British ship of for nearly 40 years. Okay, stop right there, Carla. Thank you. Exa, can you continue all the way to garden? In, in, 18, in 1892, mm -hmm. he went to live at Pornerham Castle, which is the history home of the heir of Devon. And in 1935, he was given a permanent home in the Castle Rose Garden. All right, thank you. All right, let's see who else. Um, Ely, can you read all the way to it says, oh, you know what? No, you read it. Oh, yeah, read everything to his life. The third, I mean, the, the, the whole paragraph. Okay. Throughout his long life, Timothy showed a keen instinct for survival. During the Second World War, for example, he felt the vibrations from the bombs that the Germans were dropping on Exeter and made his own a raid shelter under some steps. He was also very healthy, never needing to see a pet until the last year of his life. Thank you, all right. Can you continue, Gabi? Can you read the last paragraph, please? Okay. At the time of his death, Timothy was own, owned by oh. Lady Gabrielle Cortinay, who is the aunt of the current Earth of Devon. Lady Devon also lives in Powderham, where Timothy was given a family funeral and was buried in the ground of the castle. Thank you. All right, very good. So what are they talking about here, guys? Are they talking about a person? No. A pet? No. no. <laughs> they're talking about a pet. The tortoise. <laughs> yeah, the they're talking about the tortoise. Very good. All right. How old was the tortoise when um, he died? 160. 160 years old. All right. Very good. All right. So here, we're talking about these tortoises, right? And they're talking about a pet. They were saying that this is like, they probably, I mean, he was probably the oldest resident in Britain. All right. At that time. Very good. Let's see, uh, is there any vocabulary or pronunciation in the first paragraph that you guys need? Check it and let me know. No? 
I don't remember uh, throw, throw throughout throughout mm -hmm. like um a través de could be like you know throughout the uh, whole time. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other? Or you can check the paragraph. It doesn't matter which um which line it is on. Just check the vocabulary. Check pronunciation. Teacher. And ask me. Yes. And in the third part of well, okay, yes. Um, when say he felt the vibration from the bombs that Germans were dropping on Exeter, Exeter and uh -huh. made his own that part made his own a raid shelter, shelter. Under okay. some steps. All right. So what? Yeah. Thank you. All right. So what he's uh, talking about is the turtle, right? The the, the big turtle. He made his own shelter, all right? Because of the bombs were like being dropped on the city, let's say, all right? So the turtle made the shelter like under the steps, all right? Like a cuevita, like a refugio for, I mean, nobody did it for him. He did it by himself, all right? So air raid shelter is a shelter for bombs, all right? Like protecting himself from the bombing. You understand that? Yes. All right. Thank very good. Yes. So air, air. You can say bomb shelter, or you can say air raid shelter, and it's the same meaning. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other guys from any part of the uh, paragraph? Teacher. Yes. And the um, the same paragraph. Mm -hmm. Um. Throw his long life. No, Timothy is now a keen is keen instinct. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh -huh. Keen is sharp. It's like agudo. Like uh, he was very, uh -huh. very like you know a very. He had a very high instinct, like sharp. Okay. okay. Right. Very good. Any other? Do you know what Earl means? Anybody Earl? Where it says Earl of Devon. Here, for example, the Earl of Devon here. You have it somewhere else here before, I think. It was doo -doo 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 -doo. here again. Earl of Devon, Earls of Devon. Do you understand Earls? That's not a name. Tierras? No, that would be Earl. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Do you know what Earl means? No? No. Conde. Conde, Conde oh. de Devon. Oh, <laughs> all right. Oh, so God. yeah, <laughs> all right. So you have an earl, like you know, they have a king, a queen. You have condes and whatever from these um, type of living or life. You have earls. Earl is a conde. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Okay. Um, I think yes. it's a name. <laughs> no, it's not a name. Actually, yeah, it's a you know, it's a it's from the monarchy. All right, very good. Yes, someone else was going to say something? No. No, all right, very good. Okay, so uh, here, teacher, yes. Exeter. Uh, it, that, that is a name. That's the name of a place. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Like Pow, uh, Powderham also, all right? Uh, teacher in, yes. and was buried. Was buried. Was buried. Uh, was sepultada was buried uh -huh, on, in the grounds of the castle. Very good, all right. So I'm gonna check pronunciation right now from what I heard. All right, so tortoise is the first one, all right. Then we have all the president, Britain, all right. We have Captain Everett, Portuguese, succession, all right, and a succession of British ships, succession here. Uh, let me see, uh, historic. Make sure is, do you know that like the right pronunciation is historic throughout. Uh, let's see, the second word, for example, by okay, vibrations. Vibrations. That is the pronunciation. Vibrations. Be, be careful with the first B because it's V. Vibrations. All right. Uh, from the bombs the Germans were dropping, he has made his own shelter under healthy needing. All right. All right, very good. 
And here, buried, right? The last one is where Timothy was given a family funeral and was buried in the grounds of the castle. All right, so the tortoise leaves, I mean, it doesn't leave anymore because he's dead, but it's on the grounds of the castle. All right, so it's there. And that was like, that was only 2005. According to this, it's like a real story <laughs> about the tortoise. All right, very good. Let's see, Timothy, A, B, C, or D, guys. What do you have for that answers for number one? B. All right, can you read it, Timothy? Timothy died in the 20th century. In the 20th century? 20th all right, century. okay, all right. Anybody, everybody agrees with that one? Yes? Yes. All right, anybody has it differently? No. No, all right, very good. Number two. Uh, what happened number two? When did Tomati leave at pa uh, Potterham Castle? Letter A until 1892. All right, you sure? Is that right, guys? I think is the in the 18, 18th Century. Century. All right. Anybody else? Uh, let's see. No. <laughs> 1854, 2005. Oh no, we have A, C, and D. Oh, what are we going to do? <laughs> All right. Any other? For me, letter A. For you, letter A. You know what? Let's yes. go back here. All right. So here it says. Uh, Timothy the Turtle was about 160 years old when he died at his home near Exeter in November 2005. Timothy, whose early life was spent at sea, was thought to be the oldest resident in Britain at that time. He was found by a British naval officer, Captain John Courtney, uh, Courtney Everard, uh, on a Portuguese ship in 1854. Everard who was a relative of the Earl of Devon, adopted him and he became the mascot on a succession of British ships for nearly 40 years. In, in 1892, he went to live at Powderham. Is that the question? When did Timothy leave at Powderham? So what's the answer? Letter A. Letter A. Letter A. He went mm -hmm. to live at Potterham Castle, which is a historic. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you see? From 1854? No. No, because then he went to live. At Potterham, uh, okay. In 19... Uh, huh? No, I'm confused. <laughs> 1892, uh -huh. he went to live at Potterham Castle. Right. Okay, uh, for me, letter A. Uh, wait. But letter A is until. Right, uh -huh. And he didn't live there until that day, right? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Oops, so. Okay, yeah. letter C. Letter C, yeah, you're right. Araceli, yeah, Araceli. <laughs> Very yes, good. letter C. Yes, of course. Very good. Next one, number three. Where did Tom, uh, Timothy spend most of his time? In the garden, in the castle, under some steps, or on the terrace? Does it say? <laughs> Does in it the say? castle? I think so. I guess in the castle and in the garden, right? I mean, he was there. Letter C. The under garden. some, yeah. Um, no, he was under the steps because of the World War II. Mm. He made his shelter, right? So I would go with letter A in the garden, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, very good. And number four, Timothy. Letter B. Letter B. Yeah, very good. All right, did he have a funeral? Well, he had a funeral, everybody buried him. All right, very good, letter B. All right, very good guys. Any questions about that? Any other questions about vocabulary or anything? No? <coughs> All right, guys. Yes, sorry, Araceli, tell me. 
think it was no. zero. No, it was uh, not uh, Sophie. Sophia, uh huh? In the second question, why is from why you see if in the text say he the he lives in the ships for forty years? He, and he was found in 1854. For this one, when did Timothy live at <laughs> Uh huh. So for you, which one is the answer, Sophia? In in the second. Uh huh. This one right here. Yes. Is C. Yeah, we. I mean, yeah, we came up with this one from letter like letter C from 1854 to 2005. But in the text, uh -huh. say it. that he was found in in eighteen fifty four, uh -huh. and he lives forty years in the ships. No, he didn't live there. He was the mascot for fifty uh, for forty years. Ah, uh, okay. Right, yeah. He was the mascot of the, I mean, for the successions of ships for nearly 40 years, but it's not that he lived on the ship, right? Okay. It says, yeah, yeah. He became the mascot of, on a succession of British ships for nearly 40 years, all right? Teacher. Mm -hmm. I think that the current answer is for more than. 100 years probably you know why because at first he lived uh-huh continue because he went to live to ponderham mm -hmm. castle in 1892 right. and he died he died in 2005 two, <laughs> 2005 so uh -huh. it's more than more than 100 years yes reading here mathematics <laughs> not kidding eh? i teach english <laughs> <laughs> all right okay so what do you guys say letter b or letter i mean letter c or the other one that um x yeah. is telling us for me is there b b all right what do you guys maybe. think yeah maybe for maybe more we'll than for that. more than 100 years all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you see these third twist has made us think a lot today. <laughs> All right. So, well, the idea is here, right? Now, what I want you guys to see is that here they are using a, the relative clauses, non-defining or defining. For example, here, Everard, who was a relative of the Earl of Devon. This is one. All right. This is one relative, a non-defining relative clause going on here. All right. So what I wanted you to see, or this one here, who is uh, Lady Gabrielle, who is the aunt of uh, current Earl of Devon, also is another one. Where is another one? So here we have many uh, relative clauses going on using different relative pronouns. So my point here is not only to practice the reading and everything, but also for you to see that these relative pronouns or relative clauses do happen in real life, all right? And they are very important for you to know what they are and how you make them. All right? Very good. Uh, guys, ¿cómo van con la plataforma? Are you guys doing okay with it? Yes? So so? Mm. So so. All right. More or less. All right. I, I, I really need you guys to like really work on it, please. So uh, if anything, let me know and I can help you. All right. Carla Beatriz Aguilar. Present. Veronica Beatriz Celso. Present. Osmani Exabu de Leon. Present. Thank you, Vani Celderas de Cañas. I'm here. Blanca Estela Marroquín. Present. Franklin de Jesús Martínez. Carla Joana Martínez. A Giovanni Alberto Orantes Flores. Gabriela Beatriz Reyes Ramírez. Present. All right, very good. Dalila Estela Silva Morán. Maria Araceli Gonzalez Flores. Present. Tini Elizabeth Mejia. Sofia Guadalupe Hernández. Present. Juan Carlos Molina Martínez. 
Claudia Iliana Casun. Present. Brenda Lucía Rosales Guzmán. Karen Lizet Reyes. And Francisco Isaac Cabrera Mestizo. All right, guys, so I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. If you need to go out, be careful because it's raining a little bit. All right, and if you don't need to, please don't go out. All right, so I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Bye, Bye teacher. Bye. 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 Bye, teacher. Bye-bye. Have a great day.